Hi, welcome to Project Geospatial. We are back at Geo in 2022, and uh, we are excited to be also be back with the Cleos team. Uh, we have Guillermo and Pete. <laughs> That's right. And uh, we've bo we've interviewed both these people separate times before. Uh, so let's give a brief introduction with each of you. Let's start with you, uh, and uh, then we'll dive into the company. Okay, sure. Thanks. Uh, my name is Guillermo Gutierrez. I'm the product manager at Cleos. Um, and basically, I am uh, sort of shepherding how we deliver our products, what kind of products we deliver, how we package them, and how do we get them to customers. Uh, and our product being um, geolocated RF uh, signals that we find from space. Perfect. Great. I'm Pete Round. I'm the chair of Cleo Space, uh, but also I do business development uh, almost everywhere except in the United States. And uh, but I also bring uh, military advice and operational experience to the company. You bring the fun. Well, I hope so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, let's, let's dive into Cleos. Who is Cleos? What do you do? Okay, so uh, Cleos Space is a relatively new company. We fly our own satellites. We've currently got 12 satellites in space, uh, divided into clusters of four, so three clusters of four. And we do radio frequency geolocation. So if uh, 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 a radio in our frequency band transmits, then we can uh, position uh, where that is anywhere on the surface of the Earth using our satellite clusters. Excellent. And uh, well, what's kind of unique is that we uh, the, we fly like pizza for clusters of four satellites in formation. Uh, there's uh, several advantages to that, including um, uh, increasing the accuracy of our geolocation because we have four feeds that we can do uh, multilateration, TDOA and FDOA, and even um, Doppler analysis on. Uh, we also the four feeds allows us to geolocate in three dimensions. Um, and then also, it, it, uh, the fourth satellite can act, any of the four satellites can act as an on, uh, on in space uh, spare. Uh, should we have any, uh, we need to up, upload a new software, do any downtime for any satellites. We have a kind of a because we only really need three to geolocate as well. So. Perfect. Let's so talk about the great military phase is uh, resilience. Yeah, we like exactly. that. Let's talk about services and uh, use cases here for a second. Uh, from services and use cases, what makes you unique in the industry compared to some of the other ones that do RF as well? Well, I'll talk about services first. Is uh, is that we have uh, our basic provision is a subscription service where we can work with customers, choose. Uh, or get them to choose what their areas of interest are, then we can concentrate on that area of interest, producing a, uh, an output which is very, very accurate. We're certainly down in the hundreds of meters, low hundreds of meters accuracy. The customer uh, can take that information uh, very easily using an API to ingest it into their own analytical system. So <clears throat> that's the basic way we deliver it. We've also got what's called mission as a service. Uh, a mission as a service is where we have a cluster of satellites and the customer can take all of that or a high proportion of that to concentrate on their own needs. So right now that's in the maritime VHF band and X band radar, but in the future that mission as a service will expand to where uh, the customer's working with us for what sensors are on the satellites. So we can focus the output on exactly what they need, which frequency band, what type of target they're looking at. Excellent. Yeah. And tagging on a little bit on the um, service aspect of it, we are keenly focused on uh, providing the geolocated uh, uh, data product and we are not focusing at all or, and don't intend to get into the analytics uh, space because we have uh, really good partners that are experts and that's kind of their expertise is analytical platforms. We are uh, platform agnostic and we just we want to be a data provider. So it remains sort of provider. a uh, RF wholesale holder per se. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. So you know, focus um, our engineering capability on improving, uh, applying and operating our own satellites and then improving the accuracy as much as we can. Okay, well I'm gonna take sort of a twist here on uh, questions a little bit. Uh, what are some of the uh, major, uh, we'll call it issues today concerning RF that uh, you all are addressing and the wider community is addressing? Uh, policy changes and things that are either working your benefit or hurdles that the community has to overcome uh, to take advantage of all this great, awesome technology? I think uh, the first thing is education, is understanding that uh, this type of data is available at, a, at, a, at an affordable price. I think uh, a lot of companies out there believe that space uh, is outside their capabilities. So it's the thing that only a nation can afford to do. Uh, so this transmission and education on how uh, data derived from new space, because it's one set of data used many times, is affordable and usable. The second thing uh, with, uh, with what we do 
is getting the uh, the intellectual uh, mindset around the fact that we're looking at a big swathe of the Earth at any one time, about just a bit less than 2,000 kilometer circle. And that circle is moving around the Earth. So we can see transmissions for as long as that target is over, uh, as long as that target sits within within our circle. So it's not just a snapshot of a tiny uh, little square. That you yeah, might when is that dwell of. time? What is that dwell time? What's that dwell time of that uh, coverage? When That's you... definitely a technical question for oh, JJ. Yeah. How long does it take the circle uh, to go by? Well, we um, our, our satellites right now, uh, is to, we operate them for up to a 10% duty cycle, which translates into about nine to 10 minutes of on time per orbit. Per orbit. Uh, per orbit. And then, we, you know, the, the rest of the time we do positioning of the satellites, downloading of data, okay. uh, and other activities. But we can, we can, uh, that, I mean, that, even that, so how Nine frequently minutes. can you get into the next cycle? Uh, well, every orbit we can we can. Is that how long is an orbit? Uh, Ninety minute orbit. Ninety minute orbit. Right. Sorry, because we're in we're in Leo, about five to six hundred kilometers up. Uh, it's a ninety minute orbit. Um, Perfect. Awesome. Well, what else would you like to share about Clio so you'd like to either let uh, prospective customers know or either, uh, mm. you know, just, just give some general awareness about the awesome stuff you're doing? I think what's really important about what we do, uh, uh, Guillermo touched on a few minutes ago, which is uh, the four satellite solution because it, because it gives resilience, so it's reliable. Because we're using four satellites, because you have more antenna pairs to do the math on you've got a, uh, a very accurate solution as well. Three dimensions, useful, perhaps not yet, but useful. And the other thing is, although we talk about the uh, detection in the maritime band, that frequency band is being used everywhere. If you look at the pictures of, uh, uh, of coming out of Ukraine at the moment, uh, where a lot of the soldiers are on both sides are having to work with what they've got, you see you know, pink radios and the sort of thing that, that our kids would use on the ski slopes or uh, you know, going out. And those are in our frequency bands. So we have to think the whole of the Earth's surface, not just over the ocean. All right, awesome. How about yourself, sir? Any last words? Um, no, I mean, just to, uh, to highlight also that we, uh, because we're using uh, small and relatively inexpensive nano satellites, 6U satellites, we can iterate them over them very quickly. So we have uh, approximately a six, six month cadence to launch and build new satellites. And that allows us to iterate on the technology. So every satellite is uh, constantly improving the, in, in, in every way from yeah. the previous satellites. And it also allows us to be very responsive to customer needs. If there should be, there be a, a need or a market or a customer specifically wanting a new frequency or something we're not doing today, we have the ability to basically uh, put something, a new capability up in space in under a year. Yeah. Excellent. If there's a customer out there with a need, come and talk to us. Six months, you'll be in space. Well, perfect. Yep. One of the last things I like to say about Cleos is you all have amazing outreach to the community. What I mean by that is recently we did an interview a few months ago regarding your partnership with Virginia Tech yep. and help, them helping you out with some of the uh, orbitology and the mechanics yep. of that. Um, so uh, that, that is some amazing work. How do you feel about the outreach to uh, inspire or, or get, get students involved with some of the work that you're oh, yeah. doing, right? The next generation yeah, of employees, uh, it, professionals. You ask me, what is the company's biggest challenge today is finding the right people to work for us. And, and if you're gonna fix that, you've gotta go back to kids at school. Yep. You're gonna start right down there, then into college. So whilst we're, we're really happy to serve the community to do this, it's good for us too. It works. We've got to generate the next space people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, this is Adam Simmons with Cleos and their amazing constellation of RF satellites. Uh, and uh, hope you go check them out, their website. And we'll talk to everybody later. Thank you very much.